بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اللهم صل وسلم على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد in the name of allah the lord of all the worlds the owner of the day of resurrection I ask Allah the Most High to send peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and whoever follows Prophet Muhammad in good deeds until the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now, in this sitting, we're going to continue with the books or the book regarding the important lessons concerning with the Muslims of this overwhelming community. Now let's continue. Now the first topic we're going to speak about is adorning a Muslim to the legislated behaviors that's recommended and mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah in a general term. Now let's go to the first point. Truthfulness and trustworthy. Second, being courageous, generous, and loyal. Being a good neighbor. Helping the needy according to one's ability. Abstaining and modesty. Now these are general points that a Muslim should adore to in his general lifestyle. And he should always promote the good and forbid the evil in this likes or these likes. And of course these are general terms that one has to keep in, in mind when he lives his life. And of course, your life should be for the sake of Allah. How can we do this? By making the intention solely for Allah, then following the Sunnah. Now let's go to the second lesson. And this is regarding adorning one's a Muslim's, one, Muslim's life by following the Islamic ethic etiquettes and principle in a daily, minutely action throughout this, his life. Now let's go through some of the points. One, greeting with salam. So when you enter a room or you see your brother or sister, you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, according to the hadith of the Prophet Another thing is, being cheerful, expressing cheerfulness, being happy. Why be sad? Why be angry and frustrated? Don't you believe that Allah has decreed everything? Don't you believe that Allah does not give you more than you can bear? Don't you believe that Allah has created you for a purpose? Are you living the life that you are created to live? The other, other points specifically are eating and drinking with the right hand. Mentioning the name of Allah when starting eating or drinking. Praising Allah after completing your food. Praising Allah after completing any action in general. That's in the pleasures of Allah. Praising Allah after you sneeze and saying the supplication for the one that sneezed. 
visiting the ill. Following the funeral procession, uh, funeral processions, including the burial and the, the, the prior over the dead. Another is adhering to the Islamic etiquettes when entering the masjid and when leaving the masjid. So when you enter the masjid, you enter with your right leg, saying, Bismillah. Allahumma iftah li abwa wa rahmatik. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Or come and call it Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or, 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 or just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in the narrations. When entering the home by saying Bismillah. When leaving the home by saying Allahumma tawakkaltu alayk. Or, or, or as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said through the narration. Dealing with people, specifically the parents, kindly. Dealing with relatives in the best of all manners. Dealing with the neighbors, elders, and the youngs, ones accordingly to. Offering congratulations to the person that has just had a newborn asking Allah to bless the new couples and sending condolences on the deceased for the deceased family now these are specific etiquettes that one should live their life through on a daily basis now let's move on to the third lesson of the sitting and it's regarding a warning against shirk and various types of sins. And these are major sins that we should keep away from. And I ask Allah, the most merciful and the all-knower, to strengthen us in keeping away from these evil major deeds and also the minor ones. So that our actions will not be nullified in front of us. And may Allah keep us from the hellfire and give us Jannah so let's start amongst the major sins there are seven major ones as the Prophet ﷺ has said through the narration the first is shirk with Allah that means you bear witness that Allah has a partner billah. Allah is one magic sorcery the other is killing a person whom Allah has Forbidden, except by Allah's legislation. Consuming usury and interest, riba. Interest on the wealth that's in the bank and so forth. Consuming the wealth of the orphans. Turning one's back to the enemy on the day of a battle. Accusing modest, God-fearing women that they have committed an illegal action of, whether fornication or so forth. And these are the seven major, as the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned in the Hadith. Now let's go on to other sins that we should keep away from. This, or these may include, being disobedient to one's parents, breaking the the tides of kingship. Now what does this mean? Breaking the tides of kingship. It means breaking the connection that you have with your relatives and family in general. Now how can this be? How can you break your tides from your relatives? What's the reason? Is it envy that you have between you guys? Is it bad eyes or the jealousy that you may have in your heart against your brother or your uncle now is this is if is it your life and this earth worth that why separate yourself from your brothers and sisters why separate or keep your way keep away from your uncles and uncles and aunts 
For what reason? Pity things of the studio? Now, I know of a situation that I heard from one of a, a learned person, I would say. This was when this man gave us information that a man lived in a neighborhood with his uncle. And he has not visited his uncle for about 15 years. So there's a cut of time. There's no communication between the two. One asked, what's the situation? What's the problem? What has pushed you to neglect your uncle to this level? The guy responded by saying, well, 15 years ago, I went and I proposed to his daughter. And they refused. They didn't allow me to get married to my cousin. So from that day since, I have never spoken to them. And even though we live in the same community, the same district, is our hearts at that level so far from Allah? Azawajal? Now, Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said that the actions of Bani Adam, the children of Adam, is risen on or are risen on two days in the week, which is a Monday and a Thursday. Now, when there is some form of conflict between two Muslims, Allah will tell the, tell the angels that their actions should be left until their situation is nullified. There is, there is peace amongst them. So you're telling me that guy for 15 years, his actions weren't risen up to Allah. Why? Because he's neglecting his uncle because his uncle refused to marry his daughter to him. What type of brain is this? What type of heart is that guy? How can we be living like this with our relatives? How many, how many years we're going to live on this earth? How many centuries we're going to live on this earth? Are we ready to meet our Lord? Or we're just saying we're going to meet Allah by tongue. Where is that heartly action? Where? We go and we pray, we pray, we slips. That's it? We're Muslims by tongue? Where's the action? Where is the talk that matches the heart? Where is the talk that matches the limbs? When will we get sensible and stop being stupid about understanding this overwhelming religion of Islam. When will we leave from this dreaming life that we are living in, so-called of desire and stuff, and keep pushing Islam on the second burner? When will we love the Quran and Sunnah more than our own desire? When? Or we'll just go continue following behind the shaitan, until Allah the Most High decrees that we should die? Until when? We'll get, we'll get sensible. Now let's move on. Things that we should also keep away from is harming the neighbor. The Prophet ﷺ prohibit that one should harm the neighbor. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلَا يُؤْذِي جَارَهُ and whoever believes in Allah in the last day, he should not harm, harm his neighbor. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, last day, he should say good or refrain from speaking. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, he should be kind to his visitor when he visits. Now let's move on. Other things that we should keep away from is drinking intoxicants. Alcohol, rum, as you like. Another thing is gambling. Another is backbiting and slandering your Muslim brothers and sisters. To that level, we're going to do actions that don't please Allah and just please our own selfish desires where we backbite our brothers and sisters. 
you know, the situation is getting so bad. And may Allah keep our hearts pure on the understanding of the sunnah. You will have many people that will, you have a sitting. The conversation starts out in a good tone. They speak, start speaking about this guy, good about him. Then someone poisons the atmosphere by start saying something negative about this guy or this woman. Now here we start to go into biting. We start eating the flesh of our brothers and sisters. To this level we're doing this? What's the purpose of biting here? But biting is considered speaking about Speaking something about your brother or sister, what your brother or sister hates. Even if it's truth or the truth you're speaking about, your brother and sister. What's the relevant of mentioning this thing about him? What's the relevant? So that others can laugh? Is our iman that weak? When will we get that consciousness? When? And I'll stick a pin in this lesson and we'll continue, inshallah, for other sitting. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.